Hey, welcome back to another video. I am finally going to do the low light test between the Ursa mini cameras and the Pocket 4K camera. I shot these tests a long time ago, like three or four months ago when I first got the Pocket camera. I've been analyzing the results, but I've been out of town a lot, doing a ton of different shoots around the world. The first two months of 2019, I've been home probably a total of 12 days. So it's been really insane. If you wanna follow that, there's a link in the description uh, for my blog posts, but I'm excited to finally jump in and show you guys what results that I found. The one thing to note is the pocket camera does have a speed booster on it. So it does have a, a little bit more light. I tried to compensate that the best I could with what I put as the f-stop. So it's a 1.3 versus the 1.8. The pocket camera has the new color science uh, from Blackmagic. So you'll see that it has a lot less magenta, a little, bit, a little bit more green. I personally like the color science way better on the pocket camera now. They have not released any updates for the Ursa Mini 4.6K for those. So here's the ISO 400. Um, they're all a little bit dark, a little underexposed. Um, and you can see the 4K really isn't holding up well. So then I jumped the two to 800 to kind of match the speed booster. And you can see here that the 4K, uh, the Ursa Mini 4K completely falls apart at this point. Um, the grain and the color cast and everything just completely falls apart. Um, so to me, the 4K is out of the, <laughs> out of the running. It's not, I didn't really focus any more on the 4K. Once you get up to ISO 800, anything above 400 kind of falls apart. Um, that camera is dated to me. If I were to buy a camera, I would definitely not buy the Ursa Mini 4K. I would do the 4.6K or the Ursa Mini Pro. Um, 4.6K still has the same sensor as the Pro. The downside is that Blackmagic has not updated the 4.6K for quite some time. It doesn't have Blackmagic RAW on it and it does not um, have the new color science. So those two things to me make that camera a lot less desirable. I would probably go up to the Pro at this point, but they have the same sensor so you'll get the same idea. And then I did a color correction between the three and I tried to do a reduced grain on the 4K and you can see it just turns into garbage. I tried to push it a little too hard in post and because of that, you get tons of grain in those dark areas. Pocket Cinema 4K is fine and the Ursa Mini 4.6K looks great as well. Again, they're at 400 ISO. So then we hop up to 800 ISO on the Ursa Mini 4.6K and 400 ISO on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. These are the two native ISOs on each camera, the 800 being for Ursa Mini and the 400 being for the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. They look they look pretty comparable, honestly. The uh, the only difference for me is the, the, the little bit more magenta on the Ursa Mini uh, than the Pocket. Now the grain is a little bit more on the Pocket, just slightly. And then I jumped up to the 800 with the Pocket Cinema Camera. And if you saw my other video about the Pocket Cinema Camera when you're shooting low light, don't with either shoot 400 or jump up to 1250 because grain gets introduced pretty quick. And you can see that right here in the low light on the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, you have a lot of grain and the Ursa Mini obviously with the ISO 800 being its native, it looks just fine. Then I jumped up to 1600 ISO and the 1600 on the 4.6K, you see a little bit of the fixed pattern noise in the very dark, dark areas. Um, but it's not bad. Jumping up to 1600 on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, it's dual native ISO from 1000 to 1250. The 1600 actually is much cleaner than the Ursa Mini 4.6K. So much cleaner image there. And then of course, since the Ursa Mini 4.6K can only go up to 1600, we have the comparison of the rest, which is 3200 and 1600. And then we have 6400 and 1600. I don't push the pocket camera past 3200. I find that it introduces too much grain. 25600 on the pocket cinema camera 4K. And it, you know, look at how much detail you're getting. It's grainy as all get up, but you know, details there. 
the big advantage of the 4.6K is the image is a little bit sharper. It's uh, a little cleaner. As far as the 800, uh, the grain is a little less um, just because of the sensor size. Also, you have 16 stops of dynamic range, but this is a low light test and usually in low light, you're not trying to keep, you're not having huge amounts of dynamic range in your shots. It's usually all pretty dark. But I'll get to another video where I'll talk about the dynamic range of the cameras um, a little later. If you're planning on shooting a lot of low light, pocket camera is obviously the winner. Um, I don't think there was any doubt in anyone's mind that that was gonna be the case. But what I've done is I used the Ursa Mini Pro as my main camera during the day and most of my shots. But anytime I have a low light shot or something that I need to capture that's a little darker, I go to the pocket cinema camera for those shots and they match great in post. Also with a lot of the shoots that I did these last two months, I was actually shooting on the Alexa Mini with the pocket cinema camera as the B cam. And I would say you'd be hard pressed to be able to tell me which one is which because I had the same glass on both, but they look very, very much the same. But I will make another video about the comparison and the, the pros and cons of shooting with an Alexa and the 4.6K um, in another video. Um, I hope this was helpful. I hope this was anything anybody really cared about. I'm sorry it took me so long to get it. Over the last two months, I've been shooting so much on the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, and I have been incredibly impressed with it. It is not a camera that I would use as my primary camera on any professional shoots. It's 100% my B cam, my crash cam, my camera that I need to put into tight spaces. I did a BMW ad and the camera was used for all the car rigs. We put it inside the car. We were able to strap it into the window and, and, and get it all over the place inside that car. And it was fantastic because the camera's so small. Very little issues with it compared to any, all the other Blackmagic cameras that I've used in the past. The Pocket Cinema camera is the most refined out of all the cameras as far as when it was released and how it functions. I think Blackmagic is finally getting into the good flow to understand how to make a friggin' awesome camera. So yeah, that's that's the big thing. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. Again, if you're interested in following anything that I'm doing as far as my professional career goes, um, I've been trying to write blog posts on my website. You can check those out in the link in the description below. Also, be sure to subscribe and uh, I'll, I'll catch you guys later. Thanks.